Uh, why don't you tell us about, well, actually, will, will you do this with me? Maybe we could do like a little mini version of Voices of Her Herbal Elders and you can maybe tell us a little bit about a couple of the different, uh, maybe people that have influenced you. I was, I would really like to hear about Juliet, Juliet de Bear, Bear Clay Levy. Oh yes. If I got that yeah. correct. Um, do, yeah. would you mind spending a few minutes, uh, talking about how she was important in your life and your herbal journey in general? Oh, would I mind? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> a little time. Oh my God. So just cut me off. <laughs> sure. <when> you need <laughs> to. <laughs> Cause you did a beautiful slideshow up there and I was like, Oh, every single person I was like, you're right. You could probably talk about every one of them for an Hours. Yes, yeah. because all of those people I do personally, yeah. right? So and was, and their lives and who they are in the world and yeah. or were, I mean, touched me and influenced yeah. me deeply, and I think helped absolutely helped me be a better person. Yeah. So Juliet, <coughs> how I found out about Juliet was it was in the like very. Um, maybe early 1970s mm -hmm. and there were hardly any herb books out you know no classes no schools or anything at that time there were a few elders who were speaking Juliet was not from this country she actually was of Turkish Egyptian descent mm -hmm. and she grew up in an extremely wealthy family in England so right from the beginning you know this woman was kind of extraordinary right like kind of eccentric even because it just all those factors didn't really make sense but I was in the, our, the library in Santa Rosa, California, where I grew up, and looking for herb books, right? And I happened to find uh, Traveler's Joy and a Gypsy in New York. Now, these weren't really, quote unquote, herb books. They were the, just more stories of her life. Mm -hmm. But I just, so she had this ability for not just me, but for thousands of people who read her work. She just pulled you in. I was pulled in. It was like a, I was pulled into a world that struck chords in me, right? And I absolutely fell in love with this woman through those two books. And I wrote a long, long love letter. I'm this, you know, I didn't call myself an herbalist <laughs> at that time. I'm in love with plants and da 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 da. And I wrote this letter and I sent it nev to her publisher in England, Keats Publication. I never expected to hear back, but she wrote me a letter. And so we corresponded actually for a few years. And then I was in my late 20s. I remember this moment. I'm standing in the parking lot talking to one of my teachers and dear friends, Dr. Swabo Brooks, mm. who was also... Eugenian. Yes, <laughs> yes. I love this man. Yeah. And Literally, I loved him. <laughs> and um, we both had this deep love of Juliet. So mm. I'm sitting there thinking, saying to him, you know, we need to get over and meet her before she dies of old age, right? At that time, she was probably younger than I am now. <laughs> and she went on to live for another almost 40 <laughs> years, awesome. right? But old woman, right? So we organized, I actually organized a trip. It was really my, one of my first or second international plant lovers trips to go visit this woman who lived on, at that time she was living on an island. It was a, not a popular island, it was called Kithara. Mm. And it had like a dirt landing strip. She lived way out at the end of the island in a little stone hut by the Adriatic Sea. No electricity, no running water, you know, it was just, anyway. And so I sent her a letter and we made arrangements so we were gonna come. And then I never heard from her. And I had like 30 people signed up to go on this trip wow. uh, because we were all in love with Juliet by this right. time. And I never hear from her. I don't even know if she's gonna be home when we show up with 30 people. My mother came with me on this trip wow. too. Finally, I do hear from her two weeks before we're scheduled to be there. She said, oh, I was just in Scotland visiting <laughs> my son. And so we flew and we met her and it was, it was life-changing for all of us and, and there's, much more incredible stories about this, but the big thing that happened on that trip was that I decided I wanted to bring her to the United States. And um, that took a, a, about another 10 years, but I was able to bring her to the International Herb Symposium. And I could I, do I have a moment to just Please, tell story? Please, absolutely. Yeah, because it's pretty amazing. Yeah. So I, I wanted to bring her not only because I knew that it would get a lot of people to come to the conference, <laughs> sure. but you know I just knew that um, so many people had been raised on her books, had raised their children on her books, and also had raised their animals. So it would be just such an honor for them to meet her. But more even than that is I wanted her to see the influence that she'd had. She had no clue. And she was living kind of alone, without any recognition, kind of I would say this, like an old woman who didn't have anything else left going on. She was not healthy or anything. Yeah. So I wanted to bring her back. And bringing her to the United States changed her life as well as ours. Mm -hmm. But so it was the same thing. I, you know, I got it all arranged. She wanted to get her own ticket. Okay, great. And now it's two weeks before the international. We had over 800 people signed up to come because 
they wanted to meet her. Sure. And I'm going, I haven't seen her ticket come through. She wanted to get her own ticket. We were, right. of course, going to pay for it. So I call her. So no cell phones. And, of course, Juliet doesn't have a phone. So <laughs> it's calling the local travel agent who goes and gets Tarzan, really his name, the local Greek driver, oh to drive all the way out, 30 yeah. miles out this dirt road, to get Juliet and bring her to a pay phone. Juliet... Uh, I say, you know, like, I'm really excited. We have all these people coming to meet you. She says to me in her deeply cockney, I wish I could quote her. I wish I could use her voice, because yeah. deeply cockney accent, like, Rosemary, dear, not to worry. I've decided not to come, but I've <laughs> made some tapes for you. Like, these were cassette tapes, right, that I could put on, and I just, I'm horrified. Juliet, pack your bags. I'm coming to get you. So, yeah. Two weeks before the international, I'm flying to Greece to get Juliet and get her and get her packed up, get her to the airport. We're in the airline getting ready to load on the plane, and they're looking at her passport going, dear, your passport isn't in order. So then I had to go back to Athens and hook around that town, that city, and we flew in. Finally, I got her passports all figured out and in order, and we flew in. I think it was the morning or the day oh before the international. Wow. But it was, first of all, it makes a great story. Sure. Second of all, <laughs> it was absolutely worth it because yeah. I really think it gave her like another 20 years of life. And she was really able to see the impact her work had had, not only on us as herbalists, but also the entire uh, natural pet rearing yeah. um, community because we love her, we love her work, but she's far more well known in the animal world for her. She was a tremendous advocate for animals. What did she say about uh, uh, humans who wanted to read something about her book? <laughs> yeah, so all of her early herb books, she was a very prolific writer. Yeah. She liked to refer to herself, quote unquote, as a gypsy scholar, right? Yes. And all of her early herb books were written for uh, animals, like the Complete mm -hmm. Herbal Handbook for Farm and Stable, the Complete Herbal Handbook for the Dog. She wrote one for cats. You know, that was her main passion. And everybody was begging her to write <laughs> her books for people. And she would really just literally say, you can use the animal books. <laughs> you can just use what's <laughs> yeah, in the animal exactly. books. So she loved yeah. animals more than she loved people, right? <laughs> Amanda she might be in the same boat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she tolerated us. <laughs> sure, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> What an amazing human. Um, yeah. yeah. She was a great character, I yeah. have to say. Yeah.